Patty, can you tell me a little bit uh, about your family? Um, well, um, my parents are dead. They're gone now. Um, and my husband died six months ago of cancer. Um, I do have a daughter that lives in Montana. Um, and we talk on the phone maybe every so often, you know, maybe once every couple of weeks or so. Um, but she, you know, she lives, she lives close, um, you know, living in Montana, but I don't see her as much as I'd like to. So she has her own life. She's a busy woman trying to raise her children. Do you communicate by phone? Does she call you often, or? Um, we talk sometimes on the phone, yeah. Sometimes, maybe, you know, maybe every couple of weeks. Is there anybody else in your family besides your children? Um, I have a brother and a sister. Um, but they, my sister was down sick. So you just have then the one daughter that lives in Montana. Is she your closest relative that lives nearby? Um, I have a brother that lives um, kind of close by. But and how often do you get to see him or talk to him? Um, maybe a little bit every week. Do you have any pets? Um, I have a dog, um, he's a mini schnauzer, um, he, but he was my husband's dog and he followed my husband everywhere he went and um, now he follows me because I think he's lonely and he misses my husband and then I have a cat that spends a lot of time with me and my cat likes to cuddle with me and sleep next to me and I'm a pastor. So and you find the pets helpful, the you know, the cat and the dog. Um, are they kind of like your support system? Um, well, they need me to take care of them. So um, and they give me some company that I'm not um, I have to manage it with anything else. Like the kangaroo. Yeah, of course. And especially the cats, I'm sure, right? <laughs> and the <yeah. laughs> Are there um, any organizations or activities that you're a part of or that you um, are involved with? I used to go to church. Um, but I haven't been going as much. Um, there was a lot of married couples there, and I felt kind of awkward, and it just reminded me of my own loss. And so um, I, have to, I didn't feel like I fit, like it was a good fit. And I didn't feel like home. Is your faith important to you? Yeah, because I've always been involved in church before and church activities. Um, so it, I've kind of thought about going in and joining different groups, um, like the widow group for support. Um, but again, I was just feeling out of sorts and out of place, and so I, I just I haven't gone. Are there any friends that you been kind of or visit occasionally? Um, mostly, um, my friends are mostly married, so then that's hard for me to be around them because then it just reminds me of what I've lost. And um, then I feel sad. And I start to feel lonely because I see them with their spouses and they still get to spend time with, um, with their loved ones and I don't have mine with me. So, um, what I understand you are saying is that you're feeling lonely. 
a little bit at home. Yeah, I feel I feel alone. I feel really isolated. Mm -hmm. and, um, and my family, they have their own lives. They have other people to take care of. They have other, you know, some of them are away. And, uh, so they can't always um, they can't always be there. I don't want to be about it. So explain to me a little bit um, what you did or what life was like for you before your husband's death. Um, well, I used to really enjoy exercising a lot. Um, I would regularly work out with a trainer. And I would run. Um, with the trainer, I, you know, would run and do marathons. I would do 5Ks and uh, half marathons. Running was, you know, my way of coping with stress every day, and, and I really enjoyed, um, you know, let's say that I have your exercise endorsement, yeah. high on life, or whatever. Yeah, that's um, impressive. But that was something that I did with my husband. We did that together all the time, and so um, I haven't been running since he died. I, I, I kind of just stopped doing that. Um, I didn't have the motivation to keep didn't have the motivation to, to do it. Well, you've made it um, you know, kind of in six months. It sounds like you, you are pretty resilient and, and strong as an individual person. Um, what what has brought you here um, to talk to me? And what, what, what has changed? Um, well, yesterday was um, my 35th wedding anniversary, and I realize it's not getting any easier or any better since my husband died. Um, I still feel alone. I feel like I'm a burden to my family members and even to other people um, that other social connections that I used to have um, and we had a lot of plans of things that we wanted to do together and we aren't able to do that now and I, I feel like I'm being reminded of, um, of all that loss and you know, my husband is going to retire, because my husband and I were going to retire, and we were going to you know, go to Hawaii and, and travel and, and do our running, and now we can't, we can't do that. And I don't know how to go forward without um, at my side. Have you um, experienced feelings or thoughts of, um, of suicide? Um, I've had, I've had some thoughts, um, like feeling like if I wasn't here, um, or like I, like if I just, I felt like I just want to go with him, or if, you know, I'd be better if I wasn't here, um, to go with, you know, so that I could go and be with him. So what I understand, I want to make sure that um, I'm understanding how you're feeling, is that you're feeling lonely, um, and you're, a lot of things that you see or hear, um, as far as maybe the, some of the activities that you enjoy are too painful, they, they remind you of your husband's passing, is that, mm -hmm. is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, and when you say, uh, that you don't want to be here. Um, have you made any plans on how you would do that? No, I don't have any any plans in place. Um, it's just the feeling that I would I ha 
exactly why not. It's just these occasional thoughts that I would be better, you know, better off if I could go with him. If I could go and be with him. So what are some things that keep you going or help you get through the day? Um, well, it used to be that running and exercising were the biggest things that would help to keep me going. Um, I haven't been doing that lately because I haven't had the motivation to get up and go out and do it. Um, but also, um, if I am able to keep myself busy, um, you know, when I when I was going to school when I was younger, and um, if I was immersed in something like that, you know, like going to school, working, or some sort of a project, um, then I would then I could keep going. Well, I just kind of like to go back a little bit on your feelings about not wanting to be here. Um, have you uh, have anything in your home that you thought about using to, to end your life? I don't have any, I haven't thought of using anything in my home. Um, I do have a gun, but it's my husband's gun and I don't, I haven't even touched it. It's locked away. I don't have anything to do with it. Um, I'm not really comfortable around guns. Um, that was pretty much his thing, <coughs> the gun stuff. The gun stuff. Uh, well, would you be interested if um, that gun, or would you feel safer, I guess, if that gun is removed from the home? Um, would you, if it's just not there, would that provide some comfort to you? Um, I think it could be helpful to make a plan to remove it from the home. I don't have any need for it. Is there anybody that you know of that might be willing to keep it in their home for you safely? Or I know the police department uh, will usually um, take the guns and maybe keep them locked up where they're safe for you. Is that something that you're interested in? Um, well, I think my son-in-law was going to take the gun. Um, so um, I guess I could talk to him and see if he could take it. He hasn't done that yet. Would he be able to do that fairly soon? Um, or? Yeah, I'm having, we're having a family dinner at my house, so I could ask him to, to see if he was able to take it tonight or tomorrow. Sounds like a good plan. Um, I just have a few questions about medications. Are you taking anything currently? Just vitamins. Um, for the most part, I'm pretty healthy. I don't need any other medications. That's wonderful. That's great that you're healthy, especially everything you've been through. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, does your husband, did he take any meds or does he have any meds in the home? I don't know. Any leftover from um, his treatments? He had some uh, from hospice. The, the hospice took most of them. But there's a few left, um, and then I have just, um, yeah, but most of them were taken by hospice. There's just a couple things left. Um, do you think you'd be able to call hospice and have them come and take the rest of the medications that were your husband's? Um, would you be ready for that? Yeah, I could do that. Well, I really appreciate your honesty in coming here and talking to me. Um, you, do the plans 
sound reasonable to you as far as having the gun um, when you go with your son-in-law and having the medication removed from the home? Does that does that sound okay with you? Um, yeah, it sounds it sounds okay. I um, I guess it's good to have a plan just in case um, something could happen. I I don't yeah I guess it's okay. Well, I just kind of want to recap on what we've been talking about just to make sure that I'm understanding still where where you're at. Um, so you um, are missing your husband. There's still some grief there, um, and it's getting stronger, right, over the last six months. Um, and you don't want to be a burden to your children. Am I am I correct in, in how you're feeling about that? Yeah, I don't want to be a burden to them. They have their own lives. They have their own stuff to do. They have to raise their own families and. Um, what a pain to come to mom's house every week. Um, you know, all the time to try and check on her. They live in, they live far away. So, um, and I am lonely. So, and I don't know what exactly to do about that. Well, you mentioned that there was a support group, the Orlando support group. Would that be? Something that you would be ready to participate in right now, or are you still struggling with that? I'm still struggling with it a little bit because I it, I see where I need the support and I want to have that support in place, but I don't know how to make that call um, or how to look into getting the you know how to call up. Uh, the pastor of the church, or um, and then how do I? I guess I'm. How do I socialize with people when I get there? Because I've been pretty isolated. And then how do I? Um, once I once I'm there, what if I'm reminded? What if I become more sad because I'm reminded of, of everything that I've lost because I'm listening. To all these women talk about, or women and men talking about their um, their spouses that they've lost. Would it be helpful if maybe you had somebody with you that could go to the the support group? Would you feel more comfortable maybe with a daughter or a son-in-law or your brother? Maybe if there was one person that could go or at least keep me there. So I um, we won't meet again until next week. And so I'd like to see you if, if you can as a plan, maybe call your brother and see if he'd be willing to go and try one of the groups with you so you're not by yourself and you won't be so lonely. Um, and you'll have somebody to talk to other than the people in the group you can have your brother. And then get the, the gun out of the home and the rest of your husband's medication. So does that sound like something that you can accomplish within the next week or so? Um, I think that I could do the gun and the um, medications part of it. But was the widower going to the to the group? I could maybe call and ask them about it, but I don't know if I'm ready to go so soon. Well, just calling them and asking them about their group is a great step. That's wonderful. Um, at least you have something, you'll have some information and you can find out more about what their expectations are and what the, what the group is like. And then if you don't mind, I'd like to call you maybe tomorrow or the day after and see how you're doing, and, and if you have any other questions or, or you need to talk, would that be okay? Mm -hmm.